morning to you, uh, sir. Thanks so much for uh, coming on board to what is the new episode on the impact. Uh, it's a podcast and a video interview hosted by S.A. and the Bastion, where we try and break down the impact of technological developments on the Indian society. Uh, today, we're discussing India's 12 favorite digits, the Aadhaar, and how the most recent act in parliament, the Election Laws Amendment Act, which to, which tries to link the Aadhaar to the electoral rolls or voter IDs, um, has effects on both the logistics of conducting elections in India, which is no mean feat, as well as the ethics of the fairness and the freeness of said elections. Uh, joined with us today, we have uh, O.P. Rawat, sir, who was the 22nd Chief Election Commissioner of India uh, and is a retired uh, member of Indian Administrative Services. Um, so was a part of the ECI, a central part of the ECI, obviously, in 2018, and which isn't too far back from where we are today. And we'd love to hear about his experience and the need for such an electoral reform, uh, given his unique standpoint, uh, working within the, the institution that is the Election Commission. We also have Shivam Shankar Singh, who for a long time, a lot of us at the Bastion have been a fan of in terms of the work that he's done. Uh, an advocate of, I would say, privacy for the for individuals in India and also someone who comes from a fair backing of knowledge when it comes to understanding how parties in India work and the politics of or the strategy behind our party system. Uh, Shivam is going to sort of help us run through uh, the dangers that come with linking uh, what is known as the Aadhaar card or uh, your UIDI linkage with uh, our election uh, road. So thanks so much today. I'd like to sort of get started with the question on the main institution here, which is elections. Now, we know that elections in India has been both touted for its expanse and also its efficiency, uh, but also regularly under the scanner for claims of corruption and EVMs uh, have always been the highlight. Sorry. So I wanted to ask on the regard of or on the note of the Election Commission of India, what do you, how do you see the rationale behind linking the other to your electoral rolls or voter IDs from an election commission of India's what point of view? Actually, we thought about it in 2015 and we started voluntary linking of uh, Aadhaar with electoral roll. And to our surprise, response from voters was uh, enormous. In fact, in a short span of about four months, 300 million voters came forward and linked their Aadhaar with the voter ID or electoral roll. Uh, when the stay from Honorable Supreme Court uh, came on privacy PIL, and uh, then Election Commission stopped this process. Uh, therefore, it appears that whatever Election Commission wanted, the main objective was because uh, uh, our mobile people who get transferred from one place to other, they are educated, they are responsible, but they always forget to get their names deleted from the place they are leaving. And at new place, because of election commission's apparatus is so uh, efficient that at new place, they get registered automatically because somebody approaches them and get their forms, etc. and they get enrolled because that is the campaign mode approach of election commission. That used to cause a lot of duplicates. Somewhere like in Madhya Pradesh election in 2018, the major party was alleging that uh, 6 million duplicate voters are there, there and these uh, names will be used for bogus voting. Election Commission used deduplication software, photo recognition software, physical verification by booth level officer, all uh, uh, tools available to Election Commission. And even after doing that kind of exercise, from 6 million, Election Commission could zero in uh, to delete 57 lakhs. Uh, and uh, 3 lakhs still remained when we went to the polls. Therefore, Election Commission considered it necessary that uh, in terms of our Honorable Supreme Court's order, we should have an amendment in the law to enable us to continue our previous exercise, which was abandoned or stayed in 2015. And that's why this amendment came through. And I personally feel that this will avoid duplicate voters 
even if they don't become very responsible they their name whenever it is registered at new place it will automatically get deleted from the old place and two very important features of aadhar are biometric recognition which is full proof so no two persons can have same biometric credentials second thing is it is given to all those people who are residing in that place where they are registered and for voter list also two conditions are there that you should be ordinarily resident of that place and you should be citizen of india so under that law election commission's returning officer will ensure that citizenship is certified verified on based on evidence and ordinary residents will be taken care of by aadhar and recognition for uh, identification of voter aadhar linkages will serve the purpose for deduplication etc second thing is at polling time election commission observed that getting committed polling agents for parties was becoming a serious problem because this materialistic world where any resourceful party could easily uh, sort of uh, give some uh, lucrative freebies or something to other parties polling agents and they may close their eyes from questioning any uh, impersonator that also will be obviated if all aadhar linked people are only on electoral roll there won't be that kind of issue for any party which is not having enough resources to mobilize committed polling agents so i feel that this is going to help election commission and uh, ensure uh, purity of our elections in a big way and i think voters are also enthusiastic as they showed in 2015 and it will really happen in a very short time right Thank you so much, Rahul. So I think it's important to note that this has been a reform that, like you're saying, has been in the works for some time, and not something that the government has taken a decision on overnight. Uh, and this seems to be the sentiment on many things to do with linking the Aadhaar as a creeping phenomenon in general. Uh, Shivam, what would you say to? Uh, and of course, a lot of these were raised in the uh, proponent speeches in Parliament, uh, which is to say. votes will be deduplicated and also um sort of booth capturing will be limited when it comes to linking the aadhar and incorporating it how far can we take this full proofness uh, of the aadhar and where do we even start in terms of making it uh, almost a mandatory i know the law says not compulsory or voluntarily uh, but that has been the introductory uh, or so the avenue to almost make the aadhar compulsory for many other cases uh um, so the duplication problem that the election commission faces is actually a very huge one like i have personally seen how difficult it is to try and match names and people's fathers names in trying to find duplicates and nothing has been very successful till now so the need for linking a centralized id to the electoral roll so that people are only enrolled at one place is a pretty known and well understood problem uh the problem actually comes in at two different places uh the election commission using aadhar itself is not a very big problem but the issue is that aadhar is being linked to pretty much everything and if you look at something like the state resident data hubs that came up in a place like telangana where the aadhar number was linked to people's houses which were geo tagged that linked to people's caste data that linked to people's income data that linked to people's employment uh what we see is that when you go to an election at a booth level there are 800 to 1200 voters and political party is very actively now use data analytics techniques to map how these 800 to 1000 people have voted in the past election so you get to have a very good idea of what areas and what people are voting for you versus what people are not voting for you linking it to an id like aadhar that is essentially been passed as a money bill and is supposed to be a welfare measure gets linked to all the government schemes does create potential that at a later date people could be excluded from being beneficiaries for government schemes because they did not vote for a political party things like that sound absurd but now we have actual examples of these things happening 
like if you look at uh, you quoted telangana initially very important example because a lot of legitimate voters were essentially just disenrolled from the electoral roll so it became a tool of taking away people's right to vote which is essentially what the citizenship of a democracy is all about and if you remove someone's name from an electoral roll and they're not able to vote in that one election it might seem like a minor problem that okay the person can get enrolled at a later date and vote in the next election but you've taken away someone's democratic right to choose their elected elected representative uh robert was very right when he talks about the problem that parties face in getting dedicated polling agents uh there are two parts where i'm slightly confused on how aadhar would help as in is the idea to use the aadhar biometric setup to check if people should be allowed to vote or not on the date of the election is that what is being proposed one the second part what we have seen in a lot of pub- pds public grain distribution systems uh, a lot of people uh, the, the failure rate is about 15 to 20% so 20% of the biometric authentications end up failing at that time do we slow down the election process because someone's biometric did not match do we not allow them to vote in that election uh, as you know a lot of political parties are also very smart in slowing down voting in specific booths and making it faster in areas that are supportive to a political party and many techniques are used for this challenging votes is a very common one to slow down the voting process with aadhar introduced and a high rate of biometric authentication failure how would we handle these issues are relevant questions the last one that i would say is that our data protection laws are very weak we have a personal data protection bill that's come in but even that the government's essentially exempt from all of it in a circumstance like this i as a private citizen who's worked on election campaigns the kind of data i have access to is actually scary and the kind of data that i can map people's electricity bills are online you can link that to people's voter rolls phone numbers are not considered private data so telecom companies end up selling bulk mobile user data to political parties just because of this issue which is separate from what the election commission faces this is a separate data protection issue but because of this using aadhar in electoral rules becomes a lot more complex even though it serves the election commission's purpose really well thanks shivam uh rahul sir i'd like you to maybe we can take them one by one in terms of what shivam is talking about but uh while we all may agree that logistically this is something that we understand in terms of the need for reducing duplicity of voting and ensuring that uh multiple voters aren't registered or multiple names aren't registered to the same voter uh what about some of these logistical issues such as the first one that comes to mind is the stalling of voting and errors in aadhar identification uh it was evms before can aadhar be the new evms in that on that front actually these last two things uh, are highly improbable because uh, there is no technology developed by eci or uiadi for uh, using uh, aadhar verification at polling station as of now this will be developed late, at a later date and uh, once it is developed only then when all the political parties uh, have confidence in that system with all kinds of uh, you know protection security safety only then it will be implemented in that so therefore no issue of stalling or delaying the voting in fact voting process has become very fast with evm and booth capturing is uh, gone past nobody can capture a booth and uh, stuff the votes because every single vote in evm takes nearly 20 seconds so if you have to uh, vote for 1000 people you will have to be there for 20000 seconds and this will be a long enough time to catch anybody to uh, communicate to any reinforcement and catch anybody so all those evils have gone uh, uh, as regards big data firms utilizing you know these kinds of links and uh, other databases for predicting for uh, finding out for uh, giving consultancy to the political parties candidates that is a real threat world over not at our place and it is without even 
linking with electoral roll data. It is happening all over. And election commission is seized of this and election commission is warding off, taking all possible measures to ensure that whatever happened in the most developed democracy in their elections can never happen in India. So those uh, measures will be afoot and uh, since they are uh, seized uh, of this matter, they will be developing uh, sort of uh, uh, obstacles in this kind of uh, attempt to take this link as uh, benefiting their uh, endeavors. Uh, last thing is disenfranchisement. It is just not possible because uh, Registration on electoral roll is under Representation of People Act 1950. And under those provisions, it's a quasi-judicial authority which takes evidence on record and then uh, either enrolls or uh, rejects or deletes a name. And therefore, this is a justiciable order where anybody who has any problem or any grievance can go to uh, a redressal forum and will get redressal easily. So. Uh, I don't think there is any fear of disenfranchisement of any, any fear of anybody being stopped from voting because Aadhaar was not matching, because right now there is no technology and even if this technology comes, it will be with the agreement of all political parties that they have confidence in it and there will be nobody who will be thrown out uh, and denied voting based on this Aadhaar, there will be other means of verification also. Like there are 13 means of verification at the polling station as of now, which, is, which are notified by election commission. So all these uh, actually doubts, I don't think uh, will have any impact on uh, voting uh, by all the electors or enrolling or disenfranchisement or anything. In fact, it is going to facilitate in future voting by very poor migrant workers. Nearly 7 to 8 crores people migrate from poor states to rich states for harvest. And if elections are held, like this is the time when elections are being held, and most of those people from uh, eastern Uttar Pradesh or uh, you know other poor states, they have gone to Haryana and Punjab. How can they vote? So election commission was considering that in case biometric identification is available, of these uh, migrant workers, we can ensure that wherever they are working, whichever state they are working, election commission can make arrangements for their identification and their voting from there, which will really uh, facilitate such uh, 70 to 80 million poor voters. Next comes uh, NRI, the wealth builders for the country. Even they are not voting. They have voting rights since 2010 amendment. They, they, many of them enrolled also. But for voting, they have to come back to India to their polling station and vote from there. This number is also huge, maybe about uh, 10 million. So those things are in future when technology develops, logistics develop. Election Commission will be able to extend this comfortable, convenient voting facility to all these migrant workers, NRIs, and even all those people who are sick in hospital, uh, cannot move, all those things can be organized without any difficulty. So I think it is going to benefit in uh, all uh, its dimensions. Fair enough. So I, I think uh, your point is well taken in terms of the logistics and the, the inclusion as well as the exclusion. I just wanted a quick question before I let Shivam respond to that. Uh, the technology, this technology that you're talking about, sir, how imminent do you see remote or e-voting uh, in the pipeline? And did you do you see a real need for uh, the way or manner in which it, will, it had been passed? I think it went from Lok Sabha to uh, being passed as an act within two days. Uh, do you think it's a significant uh, amendment that should have maybe been debated a little longer in Parliament? Or, or do you think it's pretty straightforward and the hullabaloo is kind of being created out of nowhere? Actually, Election Commission has already done one bit of it, like uh, onward journey of the ballot paper to our service voters, armed forces, because the Election Commission found that their participation in election was just 2 to 3 percent, which was pathetic. So Election Commission developed the technology with the help of CDAC Pune for onward transmission of ballot paper to service voters on the last day of withdrawal. And they get it immediately, instantly, in fact. And then there are there is a gap of about 25 to 30 days 
they can uh, cast their vote they can uh, post that and on return journey it comes by speed post and participation just after this was inaugurated uh, e postal ballot uh, in 2017 participation of service voters went up to 65 to 6% which was very encouraging that uh, people who are uh, safeguarding our borders can now participate in major numbers the uh, return journey uh, project was also given to cdac but this technology with full proof uh, safety could not be developed as yet but it is in works and therefore when this comes up then all party consultation if they have confidence only then it will be implemented however e voting or uh, remote voting has been in place since 2010 in gujarat local body elections but utilization was very low in fact not even any election more than 500 to 600 voters used that e voting feature so uh, i feel that whenever the technology is developed and it is done it will depend on both sides technology availability confidence of all the stakeholders and then enthusiasm of the voters who want to do it like nris migrant workers and others but uh, election commission is also contemplating that for migrant workers it is not e voting there will be other logistic arrangement uh, just identification will be through aadhar the remaining things will be uh, having different permutation combinations of different tools thanks for that shivam can... yeah so uh, a few things that i would like to point out uh, one uh, the mass disenfranchisement fear it's not just a fear anymore because if you look at 2018 what happened in andhra and telangana in an experiment they linked uh, 55 lakh aadhar database to the electoral roll and 55 lakh names were deleted out of these 55 lakhs a lot of organization have listed about 30 lakh people which were basically falsely deleted from the voter roll the exercise was later stopped and it, it like it was it carried forward the supreme court case happened a lot of different things happened agreed but people were disenfranchised and there is a real example of this happening when aadhar linking happened for the first time in andhra and telangana so a safeguard to address this does need to be built in you can't exactly assume that it will not happen again especially when there is political push to get names deleted in a certain section because after aadhar linking political parties can very easily tell which people are likely to vote for them and which are not the second component that comes in uh, aadhar database is claimed to be full proof and uh, sir even talked about the biometric component of it which isn't being used by the election commission right now is true but eventually when they do move to the biometric component of it the failure rate is actually extremely high and uh, the public distribution system and the use of aadhar there actually shows 15 to 20% of the beneficiaries get affected one time or the other uh, because in a thing like pds you can always go back to the pds shop you can try to rectify something like that and take your ration at a later date it's not something that can happen with elections so these are not agreed that it's not happening right now but even discussing these things very lightly is not something that should be done if you look at organizations like rethink aadhar and their the evaluation of the aadhar database itself uh, the self reported discrepancy in the aadhar database is 1.5 times higher than that for the electoral roll data right now and if you see how many uh, of the aadhar enrolled people have biometric details in there versus how many have just garbage data as biometric then a lot of people have estimated that 15 to 20% of the aadhar database is actually false and fake this happened because incentives were misaligned when aadhar was brought out as an id uh, people were paid to create as many aadhar cards as they could so the and the system was so laggy that different softwares were created which were sold for as little as 500 600 rupees that allowed you to bypass the biometric component and enroll people and a lot of these enrollments have happened it's been proven time and again uh, uidi consistently denies any of it happening even when it's shown evidence uh, firs have been filed against people who've tried to actually prove it that the database itself is not as reliable as it is claimed to be uh the third component of the government itself using aadhar every 
the election commission using aadhaar makes absolute sense what the election commission sense says it will do through do deduplication through allowing people to enroll who are migrants right now for making it easier for them to get their names on the voter roll it makes absolute sense the problem comes in when the same universal identifier is used for beneficiaries of government schemes when it is used for tracking people's caste and socio economic status and other data points and when this common identifier is so easily accessible in the private domain and the election commission itself doesn't have a great track record of protecting data elect 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 digitize electoral rolls with people's phone numbers leaked are available on the grey market right now and this is coming from the election commission it is available there have been fir filed on this matter itself so how do you ensure such data does not leak out of the election commission are all important topics that need to be discussed before such a big step is taken and the step has already been taken aadhar was passed as a money bill initially for just government subsidies now it's come to this uh, this bill has been passed in two days as you rightly mentioned so these debates and discussions have not taken place yet claiming that okay we are going to get so many people enrolled it's going to make life so much better is excellent but as the world bank report on savings from aadhar has also been retracted now uh, because all of the claims did not hold up so these need to be proved more in depth than just claims uh, uh i will like to uh, tell that election commission's database is so secure that nobody can claim and nobody can prove that they have any digital electoral roll data anywhere in fact major national parties when i was chief election commissioner com- were coming to our door steps every time that why have you kept such secure electoral roll data and you are giving us only hard copy and we are not able to uh, analyze we are not able to do this that they were complaining and we said no we will not give then they went to the court supreme court and there also we could prove that the arrangements election commission has made to protect its electoral roll data are full proof and that is why we are not able to give any digital copy to anyone but in our country fraudsters you know all kinds of quacks they do all kinds of things to create an impression of uh, distrust in everything whether it is trustworthy or not that is the issue second thing hyderabad andhra pradesh telangana i was the cec and i constituted 24 teams that anybody challenging our electoral roll data come with your data that these are the numbers who have been disenfranchised these teams are there they will take you personally verify physically and if even one is found then election commission can be held accountable and can be taken to task but if your claim is found misplaced we will take action under rp act where punishment is 6 months imprisonment these 24 teams worked for a week not a single person was found disenfranchised whereas the national party was pursuing this with us continuously and we told them that this exercise will deliver the outcome as to what is there on ground and that is what the ground reality was same thing about uh, saying pds and all those things and in election it is one day thing and it person will be there are 13 documents it is not said by election commission or the law or anybody that if your aadhar data doesn't match you will be denied voting it says that there are 13 other documents issued by the government you should bring one or two of them in case aadhar data doesn't match you can prove your identity by giving that supporting government id proof that is good enough a person will be allowed to vote so absolutely it is full proof and there is no reason for anyone to have doubts and that is why in a span of 4 months voters who were really scared of their voting getting hijacked by fraudsters they came forward and linked with aadhar without any compulsion that shows that voters have enormous faith in this linking system and i can tell you that it will really go a long way in ensuring purity of elections right
So I'm going to let you quickly respond to the Telangana claim, yep. which is an important uh, one. And then I'm, I'm es- essentially, there are two problems in it. Uh, one, the Supreme Court halted the scheme that happened in Andhra and Telangana at that point of time. So the, uh, people weren't disenfranchised only because the Supreme Court stepped in and the process was stopped. Uh, first part is that. The second part about uh, electoral roll data being so difficult to get, you can actually go online and buy it right now. So the, I don't know what the great security is about that sir talks about just because it is actually available these things are not myths you can go out and buy it right now uh, i work with political parties who have access to digitized electoral rolls and a lot of them even have it with the phone number linked so these things exist quite openly it's not some major secret that's locked up somewhere uh, the second part is that the deletions that happened in andhra and telangana happened without door to door verification and uh, as sir mentioned the representation of People's Act, it's a requirement for a door-to-door verification to happen before names are deleted. They were deleted even without that though, which is something that uh, the Election Commission itself has responded in an RTI query. So uh, I would like so to respond to that. Sir, Actually, I just want there is, there is add a- some context to this, if I may. Uh, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these doubts about the Aadhaar also come from uh, sort of the courts in 2018 have seen the government depose that it, it sometimes it doesn't know about the authenticity of Aadhaar. There is the case of duplicity in terms of the Aadhaar itself, and they don't have control over the agents that are creating said Aadhaar cards. I want to ask one logistical question. Let's say there's someone with two Aadhaar cards. Would that help uh, political parties sort of create more voters or duplicate voters, sort of the reverse of what we're trying to fix here? Uh, and you can answer this after you, you come to Shivam's thing about... Uh, has about Telangana and the door-to-door voting bit. Actually, I don't agree to whatever he's saying. Uh, when political parties get hard copies of electoral rolls, they can put 100 data entry operators, create a digital electoral roll, create the, uh, get mobile phones, and then they can circulate uh, uh, in the garb of electoral roll, which is not really electoral roll of the election commission. So all these things will be available. All fakes will be available everywhere. And to create mistrust, distrust, that is what is happening. Otherwise, if there was any truth in any of such claims, why all stakeholders, all political parties, all all candidates accept the electoral verdict in India without any murmur? Whereas across the world, many democracies see civil war-like situation after the election results are declared. Imagine, that is the difference. Taste of the pudding is an eating. Uh, where is the sh- where is like what what are the sources of the of this data? Because I've also sort of worked at a at a, B- a BJP office for some time, and I know that the data exists. Uh, is it coming from ECI holders, or is it transcribed from hard copies, like Sir saying? Uh, might be transcribed from hard copies. I will not claim it's coming directly from the Election Commission. There is no way to show that. Right. But the point is that it is available and it does get linked to many different data sets. Uh, no one's questioning it, the integrity of Indian elections. We have excellent elections. But safeguards need to be discussed whenever a major change is happening in the electoral process. Uh, a lot of what Sir says is absolutely correct. It might be an excellent step, but these are issues that need to be discussed, which haven't been discussed yet. And they haven't been discussed especially because legislation is just pushed through parliament without anyone being able to talk about it, without people being able to vote. Uh, A lot of the provisions are passed via voice vote, so you don't even know how many people supported a specific amendment versus how many people didn't support. It's just people saying I's and nays in parliament. So the right. questions are larger than just the election commission's intentions, because a right. lot of different things are happening in the country because of which this step is risky. And again, I would reiterate that linking Aadhaar to the electoral role isn't the problem if Aadhaar wasn't also the identifier in all the other government schemes. Fair. Uh, Ravitsa, I, wa- I wanted to, for the lay audience, right, who doesn't understand the logistics of conducting an election at a mass scale, Let's say that there were duplicate Aadhaar cards for the same individual or voter. Let's say you have two separate Aadhaar cards. Now, and if we're agreeing that that is a possibility of existing, does the duplicacy of Aadhaar cards by virtue of this law allow itself or lend itself to affecting the electoral rolls itself? 
which is to say can absolutely no first of all i don't agree to that that two aadhar cards are there anyway so second the government thing is also deposing and courts that they might that have maybe a hmm. specific case but otherwise it is not possible second thing is with 100 aadhar cards you cannot enroll at 100 places you cannot enroll at more than one place because the judicial inquiry conducted on citizenship on ordinary residence on other credentials that is con- conducted in a quasi judicial manner and only after that your name is enrolled or deleted therefore that process takes good care and then there is appellate jurisdiction also that in case anything wrong has happened other parties can object that this fellow has got two aadhar cards and getting in rolled at two places and with all those checks and balances i have no doubt about it that electoral roll data by linking aadhar in cannot be compromised in any manner okay so thank you so much for coming on on board with this all i hope you understand the sentiment of it as well it was not to undermine or attack the eci in any form or way but i think what's important for a lot of us that uh, is to actually get a viewpoint of someone from the inside um okay. as someone who's experienced the logistics of uh, the great indian election as as we say um and thanks so much shivam for uh, respectfully disagreeing on on multiple occasions and where it may be necessary as well